Hey, Salvador Braverman here. Welcome back to the Crowdfunding Demystified YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about Kickstarter, Indiegogo, crowdfunding, how do you get ideas out there into the world? How do you make those ideas into physical products that you can then change the world with? And one of the things when it comes to Kickstarter is the fact that all of these rewards you're offering, the perks, well, there are definitely a little bit of mistakes out there that I don't want you to make when it comes to being live. And the last thing I want you to call me up with a coaching call and be like, Sal, you didn't tell me this. Why didn't you tell me this, right? So I wanna make sure at least we can get some awareness of some of these mistakes so you don't make the cardinal sin of kind of violating some of these rules when it comes to Kickstarter. So we're getting that into that in today's YouTube video. And if you've been watching me for a while and you haven't yet, give me a thumbs up on this video. Come subscribe so you get more content like this. And this video is coming up right after this. Okay, man, so I've been in the industry for a while, right, since 2012, and I wrote the book, The Kickstarter Launch Formula, before there was any kind of Kickstarter launch formula, and I kind of really pioneered that in documenting that, and also what you need to do in order to get a project funded. Well, once you're live, though, things kind of change. So there's like a whole bunch of stuff that I talk about, obviously, on this channel, in my book, et cetera, when it comes to before you go live. And then when you actually are live, it's basically kind of like a different phase, if you want to think of it that way. I was having a conversation student with a private coaching student, and it's really just like a different phase, and we're kind of going through that and talking about that. So you want to almost shift your thinking. So when you're live, one of the things you want to be aware of are just some of the mistakes that you can make with rewards and perks. So I'm just going to kind of go through them today. We're going to hit them off one by one and just make sure that you don't make or violate any of these sins when it comes to the Kickstarter marketplace. The biggest sin that I see out there is just like trying to fit too many projects into one. And I actually recently had a student who was part of my longer term coaching and we were talking about this and they were trying to just fit too many projects into one. So what this means is like, for example, if you're trying to just sell too many things, if you have too many ideas, you're trying to raise money for them all like in this one project, it just usually doesn't go over very well. And that's because a lot of the times those like different project ideas will actually have many different audiences. So you're gonna have to market each one individually, go after each audience, and it just complicates the entire mess. So the first thing is that you definitely do not wanna overcomplicate those rewards with just having too many items. It's not an online store, right? You're not necessarily selling everything possible that you can using this Kickstarter campaign. You really wanna keep it focused, you wanna keep it targeted. It's okay to have different variations of rewards, right? Or different enhanced rewards, but you definitely don't wanna be combining or mixing different types of audiences. Or for example, trying to sell like a glove while you're also trying to sell like a hardware, you know, technology device or something like that. When they're just not really related and you're like, I just wanna raise money for both of these, but I don't know how to do that, so I'm gonna put it in the same project. Please don't do that. It just, it's not gonna go over well, and that's cardinal sin number one. Number two has to do with sales prophecies, right? So every once in a while, I make different prophecies in this channel, and I'm willing to bet that if you haven't done yet your project, this is a prophecy that I have for you, right? And I'm just kind of making fun right there when it says that. So what I mean by that is that you need to make sure that you're aware of shipping and how that's collected on the Kickstarter platform. And this is, again, one of the big cardinal sins because a lot of times you might not be collecting shipping in the most optimal way when it comes to the Kickstarter platform. So there are different videos I have out there on shipping specifically, so you can go and look through those. But I would say that's another big major mistake because those shipping prices, depending on how you display them, how you let your backers know about them, whether or not you bake them into the price of the reward, depending on how how high price the reward is, that can actually turn some people away. So they might actually wanna buy your product, but when they actually check the shipping and they're like, oh, maybe I don't wanna buy it, right? And it kind of detracts from that really positive experience which you built, built up. Or in addition, they do wanna pay it, but just if you displayed it a little bit differently, or you collected it a little bit differently, they might actually be willing to take action and back your campaign. So think about shipping. Think about which countries you're shipping to, right? I always do recommend having international shipping when you can, just because you have a much bigger pool of people, right? And that's why we're all trying to launch campaigns, is to get a maximum exposure. But think through that shipping element, because if you don't, and if you don't display it correctly and go with the right method, you might kind of regret that a little bit later. Later. Numero tres, right? Number three. Uh, so I was actually, by the way, I'm adopted from El Salvador, so my, my Spanish is kind of más o menos, right? Uh, entiendo un poquito. 
but uh, I've been learning a lot more since being here in Miami and it's, you know, it's great as well. So the number three is the fact that you don't want to have too many choices. Okay. Now I know, I know, I know you look at board games, for example, the board game category, there are a lot of times, a lot of choices and there are people who violate this rule and they are successful. However, for the vast majority of people that I'm talking to, and again, you might be doing a music project, you might be doing a film project, you might be doing a physical product, a gadget, a gizmo, you might have invented a new apparel item, you might have done a, a new board game, something more artistic related, maybe you wrote a book. I'm trying to really appeal to a big audience here. For the vast majority of people, you do not want to overcomplicate your rewards. And by that I mean, you don't want to be having like a list of 12 rewards where it's like every $5 you increment up and it's like another reward, right? And the reason there is that it's, it goes back to the same psychological principle that I talk about in my book that I talk about on the master class that I did where I basically went through everything that comes to how to get a project funded. And this is about analysis paralysis, okay? You don't want to cause analysis paralysis because it prevents people from taking action. It makes them feel stifled, like, oh, I don't know which one to pick. Which one is the best for me, right? I don't know. I'm not going to figure this out. And they just go and they go and watch Netflix, right? They go and watch HBO Max or whatever. Um, I've been watching a lot of Amazon Prime recently. Um, they just go and do something else, man. So you don't want to have too many rewards. You don't have too many options, okay? It's okay to have a couple of options, right? It's okay to have a handful of different things that people can choose. They do like preferences and being able to choose, okay? More often than not, if choosing between just one reward and multiple, they will want multiple, but they don't want to have a lot that they have to sift through, understand the various benefits of each of them, and then make that decision. It makes that decision much more high friction and difficult to make. Number four, and oh my gosh, I've been saying this since day one, is that Kickstarter has to build this into their platform. It took them years to do this, right? And it obviously was not me that convinced them to be able to do this, but eventually I guess their team got around this is to make use of the add-ons functionality. And this is actually something that a lot of times when I'm on a coaching call or I'm actually working on a client project, they're not, people aren't aware of that. In fact, you can do add-ons now on Kickstarter and you can also do them on other platforms as well. But right, but when we're talking about Kickstarter, so a lot of the times people don't think that through is like, should this actually be packaged as a reward, all of these different items, or should there be one core item and then a bunch of those items are listed as add-ons. When people go and they check out with their pledge and then become a backer, then they're prompted to add different items to their cart. And again, this goes back to the masterclass that I talked about that I conducted. This is an hour long class that goes into how to actually increase order value. So you think of it, it's like you go into Walmart or you go into Target, right? You don't just go and you buy one thing. If you did, they can never long be in business. You add a bunch of different items to your cart that increases the overall order value. And that's just like one of the techniques that I shared on this masterclass, which I will link up down below. But you got to be aware of those add-ons. And if you aren't, you're just missing out on revenue. So you can be successful, but you're just missing out on revenue. And who wants to miss out on backers, revenue and funding when it comes to putting all that energy into launching a crowdfunding campaign? Number five, and this is to me a big cardinal sin, specifically when it comes to the board game category. However, it could be a lot of other, other categories. It works well, obviously, with technology gadgets and gizmos. Um, it does vary when it comes to other kind of artistic categories that are out there. So you do want to book a coaching call if you're not sure about this, but you do want to make sure that you use stretch goals if it is appropriate to you. Now, stretch goals are that basically that phenomenon where if someone hits a certain amount when it comes to funding, let's just say you get to six figures, right? Then you can have, unlock a stretch goal. That stretch goal could be a new reward. That stretch goal could be a variation in the product. And you really have to decide, is this something that everyone's going to get? Or is this something that they're just going to be able to now claim, right? So like IR Arcade, I coached on that campaign. They had really some really great stretch goals. They ended up raising $600,000, right? And John was, had done multiple campaigns. This is the second time. And he also hired me as a coach for the second time. So when it comes to this, like you want to be aware of stretch goals. Is this something that you want to incorporate? And if you are including those different rewards and you're like overcomplicating those rewards and you're like, I want to do everything. Maybe some of those rewards should actually be stretch goals, right? So you do have to think this through and think about the logistics when it comes to fulfillment and when it comes to shipping. But this is a cardinal sin. If you're not aware of stretch goals and you are going to be launching a campaign, make sure that you do a little bit of research, a little bit of homework, watch some of my free videos out there on YouTube on this topic.
Number six is actually my favorite, okay? And um, a lot of people actually don't like this. And for the longest time in my life, I actually really didn't like this topic because um, when I grew up, I was kind of convinced by a lot of my teachers that I wasn't a good writer. And I know that's crazy because I've written 10 books, right? But I was convinced by so many of my teachers growing up that I wasn't really cut out for writing. And that's because I used to write like very long paragraphs that just were so jumbled and didn't make sense. And it's kind of the same with if you're starting any new skill, you just kind of suck at it when you first start. Same thing goes with launching a campaign. So to me, that emboldened me to get better and better at writing. And that's something that I've got kind of, you know, been the blossoming part of my career, starting as a blogger, going into podcaster, writing books, et cetera, being able to now codify this knowledge for you, et cetera. So that being said, this point is really about what's called copywriting. So what is copywriting? So copywriting is a discipline, okay? It's literally something that people will study, read books on. I've spent many years studying copywriting. Copywriting is basically saying things in an interesting way in which will get people excited about making a purchase. So it's not the same as normal writing. You have normal writing, right? You have like technical writing, which is writing instruction manuals. You have copywriting, which is kind of like ad copy. How do you say things in such a way that's gonna get someone excited about actually taking action, about buying something? So the next cardinal sin is to fail to use copywriting within your rewards. And if you actually study, just go, go on Kickstarter and study some of the similar campaigns out there to what you're trying to launch or in the same category, go and look at their rewards and you'll see they're phrased in a very interesting way, right? Either the titles of the rewards or what it actually says about the reward, how they have the description or the different line items of what's included when you actually pick that package. What it does is it creates this feeling. It's almost like I'm getting so much for this one particular reward. This is so cool or this is clearly the best choice. Copywriting is a very subtle art, my friends, but if you incorporate a little bit of that into your reward tiers, not only are you gonna raise more money, but you're also gonna kind of have that halo effect where people don't necessarily get the lowest tier option, but they're gravitating towards the higher tiers, which again, increases that overall order value when they're checking out and they're supporting your campaign. Number seven, and this is like the biggest whopper of us in out there, right? If you commit this sin, you better go to confession, my friends, right? You gotta make sure you confess about this sin. But this is really just um, not using early bird reward tiers, okay? And this is something that to me just creates maximum levels of urgency among people out there. And for those backers, the hardest thing again is to get them to take action. And this is this masterclass that I'm mentioning. This is literally, I spent the entire time you know, going through the intricate details of how to get someone to take action. And I'm literally just handing all of this to you and it's for free. And you can go and you can uh, attend this masterclass for free. So when it comes to this, Getting people to take action is all about urgency and there are a couple of other levers that you also have to pull. But when it comes to early birds, this is like a no brainer for me. So early birds can take a lot of different functionality. It could be, for example, a limited quantity reward tier. It could be a time-based reward tier. It could be both of them. There are also some really sneaky things that people will do nowadays when it comes to just increasing the number of rewards that are available, right? And slowly increasing them over time. So it creates this illusion of um, fear of missing out or scarcity or urgency and those kind of things that get people to take action. So. There are things you can do here, but there's basically you wanna make sure you incorporate some element of these, of this functionality in terms of an early bird package when it comes to your rewards. And it could actually be multiple if you want to, but again, don't violate the other principles, right? Don't complicate things unnecessarily. So this again is the next sin, is make sure that you're aware of at least those early bird reward tiers. Wanna take all the stress out of fulfilling your Kickstarter rewards? Fulfillrite is the turnkey solution that puts product delivery on autopilot. The top campaigns use this trusted high-tech provider to store, package, and ship their products. Focus on growing your business. Leave shipping to the experts. Don't wait. Get a custom quote from FulfillRight today. Link in the description. So I gotta share a little bit of a secret with you, which is the fact that I'm an artistic guy. I love creativity, I love writing, all those kind of things that we talked about right on today's video. And sometimes I'll get an amazing idea and I'll just wanna run with it. Well, what I always do is I have my own kind of system that I've developed and I look and I check, does it kind of check some of these boxes, right? So if I have a marketing idea, does it adhere to the principles of marketing? right? Does it at least hit some of these major things when it comes to getting people to take action? And if it doesn't, even if I think it's a brilliant, amazing, innovative idea, I'm always going to start to have at least myself think about it 
right? I'll at least give myself a week and then revisit it. And almost always it's the case that when it violates the principles that I talk about, it's usually not as good of an idea as I thought about it. And it's usually one of what I call a coffee idea. A coffee idea is like when you've been having just too much coffee and you're like, this is such a brilliant idea. I gotta do this. This is gonna change the world, right? But then you kind of look at it a week later and you're like, what, what the heck was I thinking, right? <laughs> so I talk a lot about these principles, like I said, when it comes to getting people to take action, increasing overall order value. How do you make sure that you have traffic and funding when you go live, even if you don't have a big audience, even if you've never done a Kickstarter before, even if you don't know the first thing when it comes to social media marketing. If you actually wanna discover and learn this secret, I'm gonna link up the link to that masterclass down below and you can attend this free workshop and I really think it's gonna kind of just like open your eyes to the potential behind this and actually how it's not rocket science. Like I'm not the smartest guy in the room, right? The reason why I got, I'm so passionate about education is that for me, it was so hard to learn many different subjects in my life, like writing. And because of that, I really had to understand it at a very detailed, intricate level to be able to teach it to other people and to help other people along the path. So by no means, I'm not the smartest guy in the room, right? I just like things simple. I like things easy. I like things explained to me and just like not big jargon, you know, big words, that kind of stuff. Like I just want it put simply to me and easily so that literally whether it's me or someone else or a chimp, and let's be honest, there are probably some similarities between me and a chimp, right? You can do this and you can get results beautifully without talent. And I think that's kind of what kind of is like the bedrock here is that no matter who you are, whether you have a background in marketing or not, you can follow these principles and you can perform this and you can do this process without talent. And you can have incredible, powerful, beautiful results that have a massive impact and that expand your brand. How cool is that? It's so exciting, it gets me passionate, man. But that being said, this is the video I want to make for you. My name is Salvador Brigman. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel, for following my work, for checking out my book, for attending my classes, my seminars, my lectures, all that kind of stuff. I appreciate you so much. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you did like this video and I will see you next time.